praise God. Praise Jesus. Uh, we thank Almighty God Father uh, for giving us the grace to come uh, before you this evening. Praise God. Um, hello everyone and you are welcome to another edition of our Bible study program which we called Time with God. It comes your way every Wednesday at 7 p.m. UK time uh, because of the funny things that um, we experience uh, during the in, um, internet. Please bear with us. The time we come together to learn at the feet of our Almighty God from the Scriptures. Where we can ask any question, especially when it relates to the teaching of the day. And the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He knows all things and teaches us the word. Our Lord Jesus Christ states in the book of John chapter 14 verse 26 that, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. If there's any question you want to ask or you want to make any contribution, please post it under this broadcast. If we can see it before the end of the program, we will respond. Well, to be honest with you, we will respond. And if not, we will get back to you the following week by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Um, if this is your first time of joining us on this uh, particular program, we are New Heart Christian Ministries. We are broadcasting live from Barcelona in Essex in the United Kingdom. Uh, we thank you so much for joining us today. Um, wherever you are, um, we pray that the miracle of the Almighty God will locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, but just a little announcement. We have three uh, church activities every week. Every blessed week, we hold three church activities. On Sunday is our Sunday devotional service at 10 a.m. UK time. Wednesday, Bible study, uh, time with God, which we are doing at the moment between 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. That is when we start. And on Friday is our Friday prayer meeting, which we called Prayer Changes Things at 7 p.m. UK time. Our Sunday devotional service is held at our worship center in Barcelona, and our location can be found on our website, uh, which is www.newheartchristianministries.org by the grace of God. But our other weekly services are held online. Simply search for us on Facebook or on YouTube, social media. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. So this evening, we will be talking about sins. What is sin? Can God overlook our sins? Can we live above sins? Can we overcome sins? What can be classified as sins? That is what we'll be talking about uh, this evening. But before we do that, we are going to invite our sister in the Lord to lead us in praise and worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit of the living God, we love you so much. We can't do anything without you. We honor you. We hold you on high esteem in our lives. You come first. You are our priority. So therefore, we want to give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We say, blessed, blessed be your holy name. Thank you for this evening, for bringing us into your presence once again. We thank you because you always hear us when we call upon you. You said we should search you with all our mind, that we should seek you, that we shall find you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God, because we are a faithful God, mighty God. Thank you, Lord, because we are still standing in you. And we continue to stand in you all the days of our life. Thank you for not making us to walk in the statues of the wicked nations. You will cast out from among us as you promised the children of Israel. We thank you so much for making us to inherit and possess the land you have promised us. You said if the righteous fall seven times, you said we, they will rise up again. Each time they fall, they will keep on rising. Thank you, Lord, for rising us, for making us to rise up even when we fall. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked and sign against our lives. Holy Spirit of the living God, we thank you, O Lord, because we know allow any evil thing to happen unto us, O God. Thank you, O Lord, for all the battles you have fought so far, the one you are fighting. And the one you are about to fight, we say, Blessed be your holy name. We also thank you for reconciling the world to yourself by not counting their sins as you have committed into our hands the message of reconciliation to go out there and preach your gospel. 
to the unbelievers, to the unsaved souls. We thank you, O Lord, because tonight you are going to use us mightily by the power and the blood of Jesus to reach out to the unbelievers, to reach out to the unsaved souls, for them to hear about you and come unto your feet, even in the powerful name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we pray tonight you will teach us your word like never before. We pray our body, soul, and spirit will be receptive to hear you, not only to hear your word, but to do it, to be doers of your word all the days of our life, to practice it and to obey it, even in Jesus' name. Even as we worship God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, because we believe in you so much, we believe in Jesus. Have your way in our worship of tonight, like never before. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Almighty Father, for answering prayers. For in Jesus, Jesus' most precious name, I have prayed. Amen. I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again. I believe you paid for us all. I believe that you are here now. I believe you are here now. Standing in our midst. Here yeah, will the power to heal now. Here yeah, with the power to heal now and the grace to forgive. I believe in you, Lord. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again. I believe you paid for us all. Yeah. I believe that you are here now. I believe that you are here now. Standing in a mist. Yeah, with the power to heal now. Yeah, with the power to heal now. And the grace to forgive. I, 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 I believe in you, Lord. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Yeah. I believe you died and rose again. I believe you paid for us all. I believe that you are here now. I believe that you are here now. Standing in a yeah, with the power to heal now. Yeah, the power to heal now. And the grace to forgive. Is the half of Omega? Holy is your name. Omega, holy is your name. Alpha, Omega, holy is your name. Alpha, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Uh, we thank our sister in the Lord. 
that was wonderful praise and worship may the lord continue to be with you in the name of jesus christ um like i said uh, earlier on you're welcome back um i said earlier on that the topic we'll be discussing today is about sins and our leading bible passage shall be found in the book of first john chapter 1 verse 8 it says this is what it says if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us some other versions like english standard version says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us amplified bible version says if we say we have no sin refusing to admit that we are sinners we delude ourselves and the truth is not in us his word does not live in our heart contemporary english version says that if we say we have not sinned we are fooling ourselves and the truth isn't in our hearts the bible also says in the book of romans chapter 3 verse 23 that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god one thing is very clear god hates sins god seriously hates sins because it is an evidence of disobedience to his word if he says don't do this and you go ahead to do that thing it can't towards your sins and that shows you disregarded his word or instructions it's as simple as that how will you react to any of your children you find doing things against your instructions praise god i need to clearly uh, say this clearly that no one is claiming to be perfect or upright here no no we are not saying that we are not here to justify or crucify anyone about their act or conduct no that's not we are, what we are here for we are not here to judge but to share what bible says about the things we might have been doing wrongly or that we have been doing that the constitutes sins and also to guide us against the future actions that may offend god maybe achan in, in the book of joshua chapter 7 wasn't aware that his action will have repercussion when he sold the accursed things the book of joshua started with but the children of israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for achan the son of kamai the son of zabdi the son of zerah of the tribe of judah took of the accursed thing and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Even it was only Achan that stole the uh, cost things. It was him that stole the accursed things. The Bible said it was the children of God that did it. That is how far sins can ravage. It's like cancer. It was only him that stole the accursed um, items. But the Bible said that the children of Israel did it. So even though it was only him, praise God. The war, what happened was that the war they could have won right away was lost. And they went to God to inquire what they have done wrong again. And God said to them that Israel have sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. And have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Praise God. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. That's what, what God I was telling Joshua to tell the children of Israel, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. They put, now they now put this together in order to dictate who has done that. Okay, Achan was discovered as the culprit. What Achan stole was accursed because it came from Jericho. Everything in Jericho was accursed in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verses 17 to 19, which says, And the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom we sent. But you keep yourself from the things devoted to destruction keep yourself away from it lest when you have devoted them you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it but all the silver and gold 
and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. Now this is what Achan did. But Achan now stole from Jericho what have been marked accursed. Him and his entire family who did not even partake in it with him paid dearly for his wrongdoing. Praise God. Okay, another scenario. Maybe Adonai and Sapphira too in the book of Acts chapter 5 did not know that their actions for taking from the money that came out of what they sold that meant to be given to the apostles was wrong. Maybe they didn't know. What people were doing at that time when the church was just starting was bringing all they had, selling their stuff, everything they had and bring the proceeds to the feet of the apostles. That's what they were doing at that time so that they can share it among the brethren. Praise God. This couple, um, I'm talking about Ananda and Sapphira now, sold their own property. But according to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 2, they now kept part of the money. They did not die when they kept that part, but when they brought the rest and they did not tell the apostles they have kept uh, from, from the proceed, they both died. The items belonged to the Lord where they determined to sell and bring the money in and when they kept that part of it, that became stealing. Praise God. This is how it works. When they, when they gathered their property they wanted to sell together, they said, okay, we are going to sell these, uh, this one, that one, blah, blah, blah. This is what we are going to sell. And when we, when we finish selling it, we are going to bring the proceeds to the feet of the apostles. Immediately they had that in mind, it, that thing belongs to the Lord. Because they have had it in mind that they, whether they tell anybody, whether they didn't, it doesn't really matter. They determined to sell that property and bring the proceeds to the, to the apostles. When they sold it, when they, they, the money is in their possession, they didn't die. But now when they came to the apostles, and they now only, they have, they've taken part of it in their pocket, and they gave the balance to the apostles, to the feet of the apostles, and uh, they've kept part of it. That became sin. They have taken from that proceed. They stole from it. Praise God. And that, that thing became a sin. So now the question we will be asking ourselves tonight is, what constitutes a sin? What can we refer to as sin? What are the things we can refer to as sins? Now, in the Bible, sin is defined in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, as all unrighteousness. It says that all unrighteousness is a sin. And there is a sin not unto death. Okay, wrongdoing, wicked actions, what is not right, all unrighteousness. The book of James chapter 4, verse 17 says that if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. So which means you are walking along and you see someone that needs help and you know you can help and capable of doing so and you just walked away. The Bible says that constitutes a sin. For an example, you know you can help that person with his or her luggage or you are without hurting yourself and you just ignore it. That is a sin. Maybe you've never thought of it. You go to somewhere and you saw somebody, uh, you see somebody dragging one bag and you know you can just, oh, sorry, uh, brother, can I help you? Or sister, can I help you? And you help that person with one. But you saw the, you, you see that person and just walked away. That constitutes a sin. If you, uh, if you know good that you, you can do and you refuse to do it, all unrighteousness, things that you are doing that the Lord of God and Lord of mankind say is not right, it's a sin. Disobedience to the word or to an instruction from God is a sin and knowing what is good to be done and not done is a sin. You know I said the Lord of God as stated in the Bible and disobeying the word of God. These are two different things. The Lord of God and the instruction from God. They are two different things. The Lord of God as in the commandments as stated in the Bible. But God can still ask you to do something and any refusal is a sin. That is disobedience. When God asked Hosea to marry a prostitute in the book of Hosea chapter 1 verse 2, he did. If he had disobeyed, praise God, that should have been an act of disobedience and could have been a sin before God. Sin is to God and things done wrong to man is the wrong offense. Praise God. The book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs at chapter 6 verses 16 to 19 reads, These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven an abomination to him. A proud look, that's number one. Number two, a lying tongue. 
Number three, ants that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devises wicked plans. Number five, feet that are swift in running to evil. Number six, a false witness who speaks lies. And seven, one who sows discord among brethren. Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2, um, Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, uh, 15 to 17, the Bible said that the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. But they did eat the fruit and were punished. Aaron's sons were killed for going against God's instruction. The book of Leviticus, chapter 10, verses 1 to 2. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put fire in them, and had their incest. And they offered the unthor- unauthorized fire before God, contrary to his command. Saul disobeyed God for not killing the Amalekite in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, and he was dethroned. Because, you see, because something looks good to us, does not mean God will accept it. Sin will always be seen. Sin will always be seen. Because your husband or your wife could not satisfy you sexually does not mean you have to be committing adultery. When you do, you sinned. Because you have to be sure um, your husband is a real man does not mean you have to practice sex before marriage. Because you want you want to know whether it can do or, n- or not, then you have to go and try to do sex before marriage. When you do, you sinned. You can't help your husband by bringing another man's children to the family because he is infertile. You cannot do that. Many things we do that look nice in our eyes, but that that God detests. Even though you have done something to prevent bloodshed, it is still a sin. We need to understand what is a sin. Even though it looks good that if I do this thing, or maybe um, my ho- my husband is infertile, I have to um, go out to go and bring um, um, another man's children into the family so I can I can help him. Or um, uh, but my wife is, uh, is is pregnant. Um, she can't. I can We can't make love now. They have to go out to to and please myself. That one is not allowed. That is a sin before God. No matter how good a sin looks like, it's still a sin before God. Praise God. If you go to a shop and steal something because you are hungry, it's still an act of stealing. That is a sin. Okay, you are hungry, and you go to a shop and you uh, steal a loaf of bread. That's still stealing. That is still a sin. Praise God. You take one of those grapes to test. It, 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 uh, in the sh- you go to all these uh, supermarket and you pick one of those grapes. And you say, ah, let me see whether this thing is sweet. And you pick one of them, you put it in your mouth to test it. That is stealing. Except if you take that bundle and you pay for it. Praise God. Okay. So, we, we need to be very careful how you do things. You sin. You know some people... They go to the market and pretend that they are buying Gary. And from uh, some of you don't understand Gary, I think we call it Kazava floor or something like that. And they go to the market, they go from one shop to they are testing it. Uh, and they ah, madam, can I test your Gary whether it's sweet? And they put handful and they put it in their mouth. By this time, they walk about three or four shops, they already belly food. Okay, and they, they, they are saying they are testing. Okay, that's what they are doing, if it is good or not. And by so doing, they have got enough. Praise God. They have got enough. And they ended up buying nothing. When they are fell, they say, okay, I will come another day. Thank you, man. And they walked away. That is a sin. You go to the shop, bought a dress, went to a party, and return it back to the shop for a refund after it has been used. That is dishonesty. That is a sin. Praise God. Maybe you've not been to a party. You see some people at the party with dress label dangling on the dress. And because they don't want to tear up the label, and then they're back home, they fold it back and they take it to the shop and say that, that uh, 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 yeah, I've returned. I don't want. I don't want that dress anymore. All these kind of things. Stop doing it. Stop doing all these kind of things. The book of Matthew chapter five verse twenty two says, "But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment." Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, "Raka," 
is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. So many things we don't care to be important. But God look at it as sins. Praise God. If you take your husband or your spouse money without permission, that is stealing. That is sin. Eh? You see that your husband is uh, sleeping. <laughs> And you go to the you go to the trouser and you take took the money without telling him. And then uh, you 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 tip toed, you know, you tip toed, you tip toed, you don't want to wake him up and took the money and you ah uh, that is a sin, that is stealing. <laughs> that is stealing. And it, it's true. And your husband as well. You the, the steel belongs to you, but you want to eat one meat, and you in the middle of the night, you know your wife shouldn't know. And you go to the kitchen and use fork to pick one meat and you eat it there and then. I don't want anybody to, since you have it in mind, I don't want people to know that, that you are stealing the meat. Your part that is, is that is stealing. Well, we need to understand all this. You might be thinking, you know, it's not important, but that is the spirit of stealing in you. Praise God. Okay, um, look at what the Bible says about the works of the flesh, which are sins in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Now, the works of the flesh. Are manifest which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I've also said you to you in the past, that which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So my brothers and sisters, which one is just among them? Go and read that book, the book of Galatians. Go and read that book again. And see which one you can pick that you are doing among them. The reason why we have to discuss about this today is because of an incident that happened a few days ago. In which a sister died, died due to a domestic violence. And some people were blaming her that she should have left the marriage instead of her losing her life. If she had left, maybe she would still be living by now. Maybe. People were saying she could have done this. She could have done that. She could have done this. She could have done that. They were saying she could have divorced her husband instead of staying on and her sudden death could have been prevented. That's what they are saying. Okay? That's what they are saying. They are saying she should have just divorced the man. We are not going to discuss individual cases this time, but we will talk generally um, uh, about a scene. Sin is simply an act of disobedience to instructions of God, like I've been saying. If you do anything that is contrary to what God says, that is a sin. And that is what the Bible says. Now, about our case scenario. In the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verses 15 to 16, God said, I hate divorce. Probably, as he hates all other sins. He said, I hate divorce. This is the war. Uh, this is what the Lord of Moses says on divorce in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-four, verses one to four. He says, "When a man takes a wife and marries her, he then she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her, and he writes her a bill of divorce and put it in her hand and send her out of his house, and she depart of his house." And if she goes and becomes another man's wife and the latter husband dislikes her and write up a bill of divorce and put it in her hand and uh, send her out of the house. Or if the latter husband dies, okay, who took her to be his wife? Then a former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be his wife after she has been defiled. For that is an abomination before God. And... Um, the, the Bible says that particular law is saying, and you shall not bring guilt upon the land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance. Okay, in this particular verses, what he's saying is that um, if you find indecency in every version I've read, none of them mention adultery. None of them mention, they are just using the word indecency. It now depends what, how you want to interpret the word indecency. Okay, that means something that is not decent. Maybe stealing or anything like that. The Bible didn't specify. It's just indecency. And uh, you, the, the, that particular law, Deuteronomy, now says, okay, has the woman to you send her out of your house? Okay, and another man finds the woman, marries her, and things like that. But Jesus referred to this, okay, when questioned about divorce. 
he said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 32 that, But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ said. If anyone leaves a marriage except for this, Jesus has said commit adultery. And don't let us forget that adultery is a sin. Paul advises, when he was talking about the issues in a marriage between an unbeliever and a believer, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15, that God has called you to peace. God has called you to peace. Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 19 that husbands love your wives and do not be harsh on them. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 1 to 7 says that likewise wives be subject to your own husband so that even if some do not obey the word they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. Praise God. When they see your respectful and pure conduct do not let your adorning be external only, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the only women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husband as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord. And you are our children. If you do good and do not fear anything, that is frightening. Praise God. Likewise, husbands, live with wives, with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the women as the weaker vessels. Since they are ears, since they are ears, since they are ears, with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. This sister must have thought of this that living a marriage will be against the commandment of God. She might have thought of that. And also, she might have been thinking of the stigma of being referred to as a divorcee and at the same time losing her position as a worship leader in the church. She must have, because of all this, continued enduring the abuse and the torment and believing that God will change the man one day. Maybe, maybe that, is, that could have been the case. She may be scared that I don't want people to be referring to me as a divorcee. But the man changing, that day never came. Domestic violence can actually stop in the family. Beating one another is not the only evidence of domestic violence. When you start having the fear of going home, you need help. If your spouse speaks and your temperature rises, you need help. If you hear his voice or you hear a voice and the temperature rises, you need help. Nothing wrong in having respect for your husband, but you will know that this is not an honor but an abuse when things like that start going on in your marriage. If you are going through issues similar to this in your family, talk to someone please before it's too late. Praise God. Let me tell you this story. This is true story and it happened to me. A man called me on Facebook Messenger years back that I should help him collect his wife's password on Facebook. Okay. He said that he did not want her to be on Facebook. Maybe that one has caused trackers in the family. I asked, why me? He said, because he knew she would do if I asked her. I've never met any of these two. When I used to do front cover magazine years ago, many women liked it. I used to promote black beauty at that time. This woman happened to be one of those that I front covered on that magazine. So what I did when the husband called me in and I, I'm, he called me in on phone. So I sent the woman a message that this is what her husband said. And this woman actually gave me the password and I gave it to the man. That solved all problems and the marriage was fine afterwards. Praise God. Maybe that could have become tension in the family. Maybe that one have, could have become domestic violence in the family. Because of Facebook. For some reasons, some men do not want their wife to be on Facebook. This man was one of them. He said the first Facebook account our wife opened. He closed it himself because they have the joint password at that time. Then the woman opened another one with a different name. And that was the one she was using 
to chat with me but the man got to know that okay she's now uh she's now on facebook again she's now on front cover magazine i think that stopped what could have resulted to domestic violence if domestic violence is present in any marriage there's always a call there must be a reason why you're having the domestic violence in your, in your family because what i mean is c-a-u-s-e and there's usually warning from the oppressors before these things start to get out of hand there are so many other women in the same situation are like this sister who are going through the same abuse but because of what i mentioned before they continue to stay on they are afraid of the stigma they are afraid of being referred to as a, a divorcee and they are afraid of losing their position as a worship leader or whatever they are doing in the church maybe they are uh, prayer warriors or they are choir leader maybe they, they maybe they are holding some position they, they are scared to losing that um position and they are scared for people calling them divorcee praise god and if to be honest with you, that would have been the reason. But I can tell you one thing. No church has the power to annul anyone's marriage and no pastor has that power. I've had people blaming the church for not advising a woman uh, that is going through a domestic violence uh, should to just leave, leave her family. No church or pastor can do that. What the Lord has joined together, let no man put us on that. What any church or church leader can do is to be counseling and praying for the parties involved they may advise you to separate for a while for peace to reign and in many situations like that some couples that separated eventually got divorced because why they don't see each other anymore they got separated and that was it there are some that came together although if you want to leave because your life is in danger go to god it is your own decision it's not church responsibility to tell you to leave your marriage. No church has the power to do that. If you feel your life is in danger and you might die one day, you might be killed one day, go to God and say, God, I want to leave this marriage. It's going to take my life. And wait and hear from God. Remember that when you do, it becomes a sin. Okay, If you leave without authority from God, it becomes a sin. And the church today has labeled the divorcees as uttermost sinners. For me, saying that is not saying you should not do whatever you want to do, but to remind you that divorce is a sin. Praise God. I just need to let you know that. At the wake of Sister Osinachi's death, one sister posted this on her timeline on Facebook, and I'm going to read it to you. This is what she wrote Everyone is now a marriage counselor over Osinachi's abusive marriage and tragic death. The question is, how many believers in Nigeria will have stood with her without judging and condemning her? That is, if she has divorced. The love we are showing her in death now, will we have shown her a quarter of it as a divorcee? Can we do that? This sister continues. She said, I remember visiting a Christian bookshop in Nigeria uh, to get a Juanita Bynum's book sometimes ago. This was shortly after she and Bishop Wicks' uh, ex-husband parted ways. I was surprised not to see any of her books in this bookshop where I had bought her books previously. Okay? And um, out of curiosity, I asked the manager why. In his words, the manager said, since I divorced, we no longer sell our books. Nigerian Christians are no longer buying so, we stopped placing order. Again, shortly, after the now late Keith, the uh, Branama Krona and her husband Alec divorced, I attended a church program. That sister is still writing. The guest minister, who is one of the most popular in his country, climbed the pulpit and in a bid to drive his holiness sermon home, he said, and I quote, you know that gospel minister, you know that gospel minister called Keith. She has lost every right to be called a gospel minister. She is not qualified to climb and sing on any church altar. I saw so shocked at how such a man of God could be so careless and judgmental. Imagine how many authors this highly respected voice in the Nigerian church but have climbed to speak so poorly of Keith just because of divorce. It is easy for everyone to turn lover of Osinati because she is no longer alive. 
This sister ended her post there. Okay. Now, this is me now talking now. Many remain in their marriage because of what the people will call them or what could become of their services to God. Okay. But they don't know what they are going through in their marriage. In some churches, those who are divorcees have been barred from doing many things in the church. They are not allowed. They have been barred. Once they know that you are a divorcee, that is the end of services in the church. They are not allowed to hold any post or take communion. I've seen where a single mother was asked to step down as a worship leader in the church because she has two children and she's not living, she's not living with the father because she's a single mom. But talk of it. The church truly has the role to play in upholding the commandment of God. The church is like the court of law which interprets the heart of the parliament and uphold the law of the government. That's right. The church has to protect the word of God. Can you see why many remains in abusive marriage. But still, when divorce takes place, no matter how the situation is in that marriage, it becomes a sin. Unless God permitted it. God can permit it. God can send a prophet to you. God can send his messenger to you and say, leave that marriage. God can permit it. That is, that is, that is going to be from God. God can allow that to happen. Okay, so how did we get here? You are talking about sins. Except by adultery, no divorce is allowed. That is in Christianity. Christianity forbids that. That decision remains with you. Praise God. Those who have been saying it is church fault that the church could have intervened, well, well done. Well done for saying that. The church has limitation in what they can do in anyone's marriage. I need to let you know that. They can't just be poking those into every marriage. They can only join your hands together in holy matrimony, but not to put asunder what God has joined together. They cannot do that. But that does not mean you cannot do what you want to do. That to be, be that to be between you and God. Okay, where does God stand here? As I said in the beginning, this is not to rumble, condemn, or judge anyone, but just to simply define what his sins all about. Whatever made you to sin, sin will always remain a sin. It is not over to the Almighty God to forgive. No matter how, let me tell you this, no matter how grave a sinful act is, no matter how grave a sinful act looks to us, God can still forgive. We have the record of those that sinfully wronged him, but when they humbled themselves, he forgave them. He said, what will he do with the death of a sinner? God we forgive you. If you have done something and you go to and you humble yourself. If you have done any of these, the Lord forgives but we forever hate sins. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 23, Samuel told Saul, for the rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Some past errors of life we cannot amend. We have done them, they've gone. We go to God and we humble ourselves and God will forgive if you repent and ask for forgiveness of any sins. He said in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12 that he is a merciful God and his anger will not last forever. Don't continue to live with a guilty mind. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has brought you freedom. You don't have to live in regret. Jesus, Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 32 that I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. I'm not saying you have to continue uh, committing sins now and then um, and then um, going all the time to be asking forgiveness of sin. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying whatever sins you have committed, God will forgive you. What I've been talking about sin is not to condemn anyone, but just to see where God stands. When he says, do not do something and you go ahead to do it. Okay. Listen to what he said in the book of Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 that Say to them, As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Why? Whatever you do is between you and your God. God hates sins, but does not hate sinners. And that is the basic truth. 
Don't feel rejected whatever your past. Don't continue to live in guilt. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 12 to 16 says, Therefore, son of man, say to your people, if someone who is righteous disobeys, that person's former righteousness will can for nothing. And if someone who is wicked repent, that person's former wickedness will not bring condemnation. The righteous person who sins will not be allowed to live even though they were formerly righteous. Okay. If I tell a righteous person that they will surely live, but they, they, then they trust in their righteousness and do evil, none of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered. They will die for the evil they have done. And if I say to a wicked person, this is God talking now. If I say to a wicked person, you will surely die. But they now turn away from their sin and do what is just and right. If they give back what they took in pledge for a loan, return what they have stolen, follow the decrees that give life and do no evil, that person will surely live. They will not die. Praise God. None of the sins that person has committed will be remembered. None of the sins that that person has committed will be remembered. Praise God. They have done what is just and right. They will surely live. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 15 says, But if the unbeliever lives, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. Praise God. Remember James chapter 2 verse 10 which says that for whoever keeps the old law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. This makes everyone imperfect. So which means, if you break one law, you are broken all. That particular verse makes everyone imperfect. Praise God. The book of Psalms says that in sins, my mother conceived me. Let me share this thing with you again. This one happened to me. Years ago, a lady pastor added me on Facebook. Because of the uh, nature of that front cover magazine things, uh, that I said I was doing at that time. I don't have very many pastors adding me except close friends. When I saw the friend's request of this woman of God, I was surprised. I was not expecting that. I accepted the friendship anyway, but went to her page to go and check was it her that actually uh, added me? The last post on the page uh, which she wrote and this, this is what she put there. She said, uh, that is a Yoruba language and it means I ask for mercy, O oh Lord. Explanation for justification is not needed. The woman died of cancer three days after that post. He left home for hospital appointment and never came back. Probably, probably she knew the end has come and pleading for mercy. That is all we need before God. Plead for mercy. If there's any dot of sins in your lives, you, you can't say you are hungry and go and steal. You are single and you are feeling horny and you need sex and because of that you went ahead and have sex outside marriage. That is a sin. That is a sin. We cannot tone down what is a sin. And no matter what we are going through, sin will always be seen before God. Now, as I continue saying, we have not condemned anyone or rumbled anyone because of their past. No, God can forgive you your sins. No matter what you have done wrong, you go to God and humble yourself and ask for forgiveness of sin, God will forgive you. He said, it's a merciful God and said his anger will not last forever. The book of Matthew chapter 23 verse 12 says that for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves be exalted. The book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked uh, wicked ways. Um, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Praise God. That's what we'll be talking about. Can God overlook sins? No. Except where you acknowledge them before he appeared for forgiveness of sins. He cannot overlook sins. He cannot say, you did something and say, no, no, that is nothing. No. 
except you go to him, acknowledge your sins, and plead for forgiveness. Can we live above sins? I don't think so. Jesus is the only one that has been credited with the love without sins. Praise God. Can we overcome sins? We can if you continue to walk in the will of the Lord. If you continue to obey his word, if you continue to pray for mercy, if you continue to walk in the in his um, ordinance, I believe so much that you can overcome sin. Well, praise God. That is all what we have for today. It's as simple as that. Um, that is how the Holy Spirit has directed me um, to explain this. If you have any objection or a comment, let us hear from you and the Lord bless you as to do so in Jesus' name. We are back on Friday for our prayer meetings. Prayer changes things. Please help us share this video and also visit our YouTube channel for our other videos. And please subscribe. Please subscribe. Um, that's all we have for you. We'll be talking about sin. We'll be talking about how we can um, be good before God. Like I said, if you are in the marriage, okay, I've heard some people saying, uh, yes, it's a sin um, if you divorce. If you know your marriage is going to cost you your life, go to God and say, Father Lord, can I live? Talk to me. God can tell you to leave that marriage. Praise God. God can. Will God ask you to be living there and die there? God will ask. If God saw that, if God sees that, what you're actually saying is true, God can ask you to leave. God can send somebody to you and say, Tell that lady to leave. Tell that man to leave. Today, both. Tomorrow, both. Tomorrow, both. Some people, they are using knives to fight in the family. It's so sad. But if you take the decision on your own and you leave, that constitutes a sin. Okay, that's where I'm going. But if you have been directed to leave and they said to you that God asked you to leave, then you are free to leave. God is not going to count that one to you for you as a sin. Praise God. So we need to balance things. And uh, our sister that died, uh, the way the church operates today is that when they see you that you've done something wrong in the past, our people will look at you. They'll be looking at you from that particular eyes. Praise God. And even though they know that you are now become, you have now a born again Christian, they'll still be calling you that particular. They put a stigma on people. And I believe so much that God will continue to teach us His word. Praise God. So, like I said, you have a comment, you want to ask a question, please post it under this video. I will respond when we see it. Um, that's all what we have for you this evening until um, what well, uh, till uh, Friday when we uh, come. I think well, we are back on Friday uh, for our prayer changes things. Um, please um, join us then to then. Remain blessed. <laughs>